Hello and welcome back and today we're going to talk about custom build Nazis versus the branded ones. Which ones should you go for? What are the pros and cons? So let's go. So I'm sure you've thought about it, we all have, about building our own NAS. So let's be honest, NASs are not the cheapest bits of kit. When it comes down to it, the hardware you get inside a NAS, on the face of it, and particularly for people that have built their own computer, a NAS, you look at it and you think, my God, I'm paying so much for so little. And with a NAS, we see CPUs that we haven't touched in years. We've seen Celerons, early Pentiums, and Atom CPUs that we wouldn't dream of sticking in a not modern PC today. So, should you go and build your own NAS server, a Linux server box there using any of the free NAS software, free BSD, that kind of stuff, or should you go for a branded NAS from a company like QNAP, Synology, Acer Store, Drobo, and more? So, what I want to do is talk about today is the pros and cons of building your own NAS. I, what I want you to do is, I'm not really going to do the pros and cons of both the custom rig and then the pros and cons of a NAS, just take it as read that the pros of one are the cons of the other. So let's focus on a custom build PC because it is appealing. And now you shouldn't even be thinking about building your own custom um, NAS server with your own PC rig and some of that software unless you've built your own PC. Because you know that feeling when you build your own computer? I don't think, and I've built probably more than 10 computers in my lifetime, Every time I build a computer, there is no way in my heart of hearts I believed it's going to work first time. I believe that it should. I believe that all the components I've put in the right place and I've plugged in everything and that all the components are going to work fine. But I have never, ever pressed that power button the first time with my copy of Windows getting ready to read off that ISO or from the disk and thought, this is definitely going to work first time. That feeling, that experience with computers is what you're going to want if you're going to build your own PC. If you've never had that feeling, you are not going to have fun with building your own custom NAS. Now, let's not start low. Let's talk about the good side. Let's talk about the good things about building your own NAS server. Because NASes, as much as I love NASes, obviously, the channel, the blog and stuff, there's still no denying that there's an enormous appeal to building your own PC rig. First and foremost, and the most obvious one of all, it is so much cheaper. Building your own custom Linux NAS or, you know, turning any old PC into a NAS is so much cheaper. You can get, if you use the same CPU, RAM and motherboard options that you find in modern NAS today, you will barely spend half of the same money. The NAS, you, you can end up getting away with some significant CPU and memory options if you use the same budget you were going to spend on a Synology or QNAP NAS. You can build a Linux PC for as little as 120, 150 quid to make it pretty functional um, in terms of hardware. And if you're going to spend about three to 350, you can get a real beast of a custom built server because you're not going to use a monitor. You're not going to use a lot of the components for you would have from a PC. You are building something with network only access and with all the software, once again, like free NAS and stuff like that, that are completely freeware to download and install. That takes care of the software cost, whereas in NAS, the software cost is built in to the hardware. When you buy a NAS, you're not just buying the hardware, you are buying the software, DSM from Synology, QTS from um, QNAP, TOS from Terra Master, Thecus OS 7 from Thecus. They've all got their own software and the cost of maintaining that software and all the updates and research and development are bundled into that cost. That's why NAS costs so much more. Custom PC, the software is free and all you've got to worry about paying for is the hardware, hence the price is lower. Next advantage, it's far more configurable. You can configure options on a folder file level as well as the software itself and tinker with the entire makeup of that software so much more on a free NAS setup than you can on a Synology or QNAP NAS. You can do so much more and the way that the device works, thanks to the Linux open source software, that on a free NAS, it's far, far more configurable. We'll get into more details about that later on. Um, it's much more upgradable. You can upgrade the CPU, the memory, the motherboard, the port so much easier on a free NAS custom build than you can on a NAS because a NAS is designed with a CPU that's never removed and software and memory limitations built in to make sure the device is always stable. I know I always make this comparison, but I'll make it again. Um, a custom built NAS and branded NAS 
are like console gaming, I'm oh sorry, uh, PC gaming and console gaming. One of them is far more configurable and up upgradable. A console is designed to be stable and have set preset frames per second and performance. Ergo, there are limits built in all over the place on a NAS to maintain that level of stability. Something a free NAS doesn't do to you. Um, next, you can leverage your budget on a free NAS open source system that you build yourself in favor of software, of hardware, of utilities. Rather with a NAS, where you find, particularly with Synology NAS, is you're unable to leverage your spending how you see fit. They will make you spend your money on the internal hardware or the storage or the connectivity, but very rarely let you slide the dial, so to speak, so you can have a moderate CPU, you know, pretty good, but not worry too much about the others and still keep within a budget. Most NAS brands will make you spend extra to try and do stuff like that and end up spending thousands of pounds. Something a custom PC will let you do for between 500 pounds and 900 pounds. Um, next, you can recycle hardware on a custom, design, uh, custom machine. If you've got an old motherboard or an old computer lying around, use them. If you've got some memory knocking around that's compatible, use it. If you've got old hard drives, old, you know, compatible ATA, IDE sort of drives, old drives, new drives, and the custom built PC is far more open in terms of configurability and therefore you can recycle old stuff you have knocking around or buy second hand individual components instead of buying a complete custom unit from a NAS brand and once again saving money but moreover recycling overall. Next the amount of open source apps on a freeware device, uh, you know, one of your Linux custom built NASes, is vastly larger. Synology and QNAP have got, you know, well over a hundred apps each, and they include things like Plex, their own proprietary first party software, and surveillance software too. FreeNAS software has all of those as well, but also lets you use things like MAME emulation engines, it lets you use VirtualBox for having VMs of things like Hackintosh and other far, far more bespoke virtual machines, something you don't get from Synology and QNAP, um, other than virtualization platforms and virtual machine managers that handle Windows machines and such, or container station applications for mini Linux apps and Linux desktops. Once again, free NAS you know, platforms and build your own, you have a huge array of applications in the thousands, not the hundreds, to have a much more configured NAS experience. And finally, uh, a custom built NAS lets you access things like ZFS far, far easier. ZFS is a file system, and whereas Synology, QNAP, and those sort of brands use just in, for the most part, um, ext4, standard file format, or BTRFS, which is a great file system, but again, Synology will make you pay through the nose for that. Whereas free NAS platforms will let you access both of those and ZFS platforms far more affordably. But it's not all good. As great as this has all sounded for building your own custom PC, with the positive, there's the negative. With the pros, there's the cons. And the cons, unfortunately, are deal breakers for a number of you out there. Because I've built my own custom uh, NAS and I've really, really enjoyed it, but there's still no denying that a freeware um, platform does have a lot of disadvantages. First and foremost, custom built PCs are always bigger. Um, if you try to have a NAS, one of the other reasons our NAS is cheap, uh, more expensive is because of the research and development that goes into a far smaller, more energy efficient, quieter and uh, effectively better for the environment, your environment and the world in general uh, device, making less noise, lower power consumption and basically not making a big footprint in your environment. A custom device, you'll be using a PC, a PSU and basically the entire build of a device that is not designed to be on 24 seven. You will be building a device like a desktop PC that's meant to be used for long periods, five, 10, 15, even 24 hours, but not days, weeks, months, and years. So again, first big downfall there. Next, because they create more noise and create more dust and use more power, they are generally more prone to hardware failure. Um, so branded NAS devices, because they've been designed to lower all of these overheads, the impact of those on the hardware is lessened and therefore they last longer. And in terms of that warranty, we'll get to that later on. 
Whereas a custom built device, all of the components, you typically find it from different brands. They're not built to be cohesive to one another, just for general compatibility with other devices. The result being that often hardware failure is more, um, more you know, you're more susceptible to it on a custom device than you are on a, are on a branded NAS platform. Next, it requires a much, and I can't stress this enough, much higher skill set. Custom built NAS is more than just building a PC from scratch, and you can do that. But anyone that's ever installed a Windows operating system will think, ah, that's easy, and they're right. If you've done that, good for you. Well done, you've built your own PC and installed Windows. But that doesn't relate as much as you would think to learning network environments, network controls, network setup, the DNS that we'll talk about later on. And effectively, the large amount of information you're gonna have to learn um, to build your own free now. And if you've got time and you want a hobby, that's great. If you want something that works right now for your home or business needs, go branded. It's easier and the extra bit that you'll spend is time, is money that you're going to get back in time with the stuff that you're not going to spend on that custom built machine. Next, DDNS. Effectively, what makes the NAS accessible by the internet and anywhere in the world easily? You're going to have to make sure you set up a DDNS. Now, with NAS platforms like Synology and QNAP, they've got a whole free stuff still um, built in for you with your NAS, with your own one-time login, uh, you know, completely individual login. With QNAP, it's my QNAP Cloud. With Synology, it's Synology.me, and there's a few others. And they give you the ability to access your NAS over the network, and of course, anywhere over the internet via all of their multiple mobile application, desktop application clients, and more, or just via the web browser. Custom PCs can be set up to be accessed in that way, and very few times is there one proprietary mobile application and desktop client, but loads. But still, nevertheless, you are gonna to have to sign up and set up your own DDNS, which can be tedious, which can be unstable, and definitely can be problematic if your IP switches around. And if you have your NAS on a dynamic IP, it can confuse a lot of DDNS, um, so cloud-based systems, and therefore you won't be able to access your NAS anywhere in the world in the way that the Synology or QNAP NAS will just let you straight away. Next, warranty. This is a big one. Anyone that's ever had a bit of hardware failure will know that warranty is important. Technological devices and you know IT items in general can break, of course they can, and different parts are more susceptible than others. Now in a NAS, all NASs arrive with a warranty, and nearly all of them are at least two years. In many cases, it's three years, all the way up to five years of manufacturer's warranty. And if one of those parts breaks within the NAS, or the NAS itself just breaks, you send the whole NAS back, turn around, and you get your replacement or a repair. With a custom built machine, you're gonna have a motherboard, a CPU, RAM, um, PSU, a, a network interface card, and more, all from different brands. And if they come from different brands, they've all got different warranty lengths. And if you suffer a problem where your free NAS isn't booting, you've now got you know, anywhere between four and 10 different devices that could have failed. And you're gonna be spending ages figuring that out. And if it turns out one of them, like many hardware devices, have only got one year's warranty, you could be rather stuffed. So warranty is always better on a branded NAS than it is on a custom built Linux machine. And finally, we can talk about the stability of a business based NAS. Because of things like that lack of warranty um, coverage, all in all covering warranty, because of it being freeware as a Linux platform in most cases, and therefore the support you get is gonna be on forums from people sparing their time rather than paid for support on a branded NAS system. This leads to a platform that cannot be counted on for business. A Linux custom PC NAS, whatever you wanna call it, I don't believe is as stable for primary business and you know, you know, mission critical data as a branded NAS because they have to commit to its stability and they may charge you more, but for them there is more consequences if it doesn't deliver. Whereas a custom machine, any one of those other brands, if something goes wrong, can point a finger at the other one. But that's really it. Those are the pros and cons. What I think it comes down to is if you've got the money and you're looking to save you know, you don't want to waste time, you want to set up and forget, you want stability, security, and most important of all, peace of mind go for a branded NAS because a branded NAS will always give you that when compared with a custom NAS build. If you've got time, if you've got the knowledge, if you want it as a hobby and if it's just for home and it's not mission critical, 
then a custom built NAS is definitely the one for you. But either way, whichever one of these takes your interest, I hope this video has helped you. Don't forget to subscribe and chuck me a like if you enjoyed this video. Do visit the link to NAS Compares in the description to learn more about these kind of devices. And don't, don't forget to buy your NAS from the guys at span.com if you're looking to buy your NAS today or use the links in the NC article to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.